Welcome back, everybody, to the Cleveland Guardians franchise here on MLB The Show 22. Today, we are going to wrap up the month of May, get closer to the start of June. We are currently 20 and 21 in a very tight AL Central division. And we certainly have some ground to make up with a lot of teams in our division outperforming their expectations. We talked about the minor leagues in the last episode, so in case you missed that one, make sure to go check out the series playlist where all of the episodes of this series are located. At the end of the video, after we play our two games, we're also going to start talking about the MLB draft. We're going to do a little mini preview today, and then next episode will be the actual MLB draft live premiering on the channel this Monday. You guys know I like to make my draft videos well done, and next episode will be no different. We do have another trade here today, and I think it's going to be our first Major League-related trade. The Guardians just traded Bradley Zimmer away in real life, and I feel like that was kind of an excuse for me to get rid of him, because he has been horrible this season. His hitting stats are parallel to that of a pitcher. So we're going to send him to the Chicago Cubs, a team who has completely outperformed expectations. They are in first place of their division, but they do need some more depth in the corner outfield spots. We're also going to send them starting pitcher Adam Scott, who's having a fantastic season in AAA with a 1.51 ERA. So those two are headed to the Cubs for 19-year-old outfield prospect Kevin Alcantara from the Dominican Republic. I really like Alcantara's skill set. He seems like he has the potential to be a solid five-tool player. He doesn't have any major weaknesses at all, and he's been producing at a fairly solid level in double-A, which is likely where he will start for us. In real life, Alcantara is the Cubs' seventh-ranked prospect, but he's a little bit worse in the game. Like Alexander Canario, for example, is ranked way lower than him in real life, according to MLB.com, but he's better in MLB The Show. So this trade necessarily wouldn't happen in real life, but I think the value is fair here in the terms of the game because the Cubs make their roster a little bit better, adding some more depth in the outfield. And we've got a prospect who I feel pretty good about with Kevin Alcantara. So with Bradley Zimmer gone, we need to replace him on the Major League roster. I wanted to call up somebody who was already on the 40-man roster, and I decided to go with Stephen Kwan, who is already on the big league team in real life. I don't want to make my moves based on what the real-life Guardians are doing, but me trading away Zimmer and calling up Kwan just happened to be parallel with what they did. So with Bradley Zimmer out the door, that doesn't really lead to any major changes because he wasn't a starter for us, and Quan likely will not be a starter either. Quan was actually struggling in AAA, and if he struggles in the majors, we'll probably send him back down. So that trade doesn't really make any major short-term ripples, and hopefully it will be good in the long term with Kevin Alcantara's development. So I wanted to play against the Detroit Tigers today. They're the only team in our division we haven't faced off against yet. The Tigers have gotten off to a pretty good start this season, so I would simulate our two games against the Reds. Unfortunately, Aaron Savale gets injured. He's going to be out one to two weeks, likely missing a couple starts. We split the two games against the Reds. With Savale getting hurt, Eli Morgan will replace him in the rotation, and Eniel De Los Santos will be called up to be our new lawn reliever. So De Los Santos will go to the bullpen, Morgan will become a starter. I wanted to pitch this first game of the series against the Tigers because we haven't gotten to use Cal Quantrill yet, so I figured it'd be pretty fun to get to pitch with him. So here's the first game of a three-game set at home at Progressive Field against the Detroit Tigers, who are 25-20. and 20. They've gotten off to a pretty solid start this season with all of their new acquisitions. Our Guardians currently sit at 21-22, and 22, and today is the Major League debut of new outfielder Stephen Kwan, who will be hitting eighth batting in left field. So here's Cal Quantrill getting the start. At the beginning of the year, he was on fire. Then he really started to struggle, and now it seems like he's coming back down to earth, playing at a much more normal pace. Here's Javier Baez checks his swing. That'll be a walk. We know Baez does not have the best plate discipline, but he does let that one go. That'll bring up former number one overall pick, Spencer Torkelson, who strikes out on the fastball. Good job by Cal Quantrill to make it through the inning fairly easily. It'll be Eduardo Rodriguez, the $80 million man on the bump for the Tigers, a lefty. He's gotten off to a solid start this season with a 3.8 ERA and a whip at around 1.4. Here's Andres Jimenez leading off today, starting this game off with a bang as that one goes into the gap for a double. I feel like Jimenez's contact has really improved this season, particularly the past month or so. He's really seen the ball well and hitting it at a fairly good pace. 
With two away, and he then is on third. It's Franmil Reyes who breaks his bat, pops it up to the pitcher, caught by Rodriguez. So no damage through the first. We go to the second, and Quantrill continues his good start as he strikes out the young outfielder Akil Badu, and we move into the bottom half of the inning. Yu Chang getting the start today. He's been pretty good off the bench this season, strikes out on the fastball. Now that'll bring up Miles Straw. He gets plunked, looks like on the kneecap. Players from Detroit know a thing or two about going after the kneecaps as that'll bring up Stephen Kwan, his first major league at bat. Grounded a third, fielded cleanly by Jamer Candelario, who flips it over to second, and the Tigers get through the inning pretty easily. Now we move to the top of the third. Here's the catcher, Tucker Barnhart, who goes down looking on the curveball. Cal Quantrill continuing to strike out batters here at a pretty high rate. As with two away, that'll bring up the young second baseman, Willie Castro, who singles it into center. So now the Tigers have a runner on base here for the meat of the order. And that starts with the big free agent signing, Javier Baez. 2-2 two -two pitch. He goes down on the circle change. It didn't really look like he went around from this angle, but the umpire said he did. And we're not complaining at all. Three scoreless frames from Cal Quantrill. We move to the bottom of the fourth now. Still no offense really from either side as Jose Ramirez goes down looking on the fastball from Eduardo Rodriguez who is also pitching a gem here for Detroit. With one away, that'll bring up Fran Mill Reyes who splits the shortstop in the second baseman with a nice single in the left center field. Reyes has not gotten off to the best start this season. I wouldn't say he's been bad, but he hasn't been fantastic. There is Mercado, grounds it to third. Candelario gets the out at second. Four scoreless for both sides. Let's see if the fifth inning will start the offensive outpour for either team. Here's Jamer Candelario leading the inning off strong as that one goes off the wall in dead center. The throw from Mercado is offline, so it's a no-out double for the Detroit Tigers. And man, do they have a really good shot of now starting to get something going. Two away for Derek Hill. Grounded a second. What a play by Andres Jimenez to get the out. That could have been a single and an easy run, but Jimenez gets it to first base just in time, and the speedy Derek Hill is retired. We move to the bottom of the fifth. Runner on first for Stephen Kwan, who strikes out. A little lefty on lefty crime there. Rodriguez continuing his strong performance. That'll bring up the catcher, Luke Maley, who pops this one into right, and it's going to drop. Castro cannot make the play, so it'll be a single for Maley. There was some base running issues, but luckily everybody is safe and on base, so we're all good. That'll bring up the top of the order. It's Andres Jimenez. Hits this one nicely in a left center field into the gap. One run scores. Maley will hold up at third. It's an RBI double for Andres Jimenez, and we finally have runs as it's now 1-0. Took us nearly five full innings for some offense. And now the Guardians are starting to get it rolling. Two-run single for Ahmed Rosario as both Mele and Jimenez score. And now Cleveland leads 3 to nothing. A big offensive outpour here in the bottom of the fifth for the Guardians. But it doesn't look like they're done. Jose Ramirez now will get that one to drop in center field. And after virtually no offense from anybody through the first half of the game... This Guardians offense looks unstoppable, and from there, the Tigers will make a pitching change. Eduardo Rodriguez is done. The former first-round pick, Matt Manning, will check in in his place. His first batter, Fred Mil Reyes, draws a walk on the inside fastball, so now the bases are loaded. Last episode, when we had the bases loaded, of course, Ahmed Rosario had that big grand slam. This time, it's Bobby Bradley. He goes down on the check swing, low fastball. Still two away, though. The Guardians have another opportunity. And it's going to be with Oscar Mercado, who also strikes out on the outside slider. So the Guardians lead the bases loaded, but they also score three. So they could have done more, but they can't really complain. It was a very strong inning. Now the Tigers are going to look to answer here in the sixth. And I suppose that's a good start. A single in the left field for Javier Baez, who reaches base for a second time today. That'll bring up Spencer Torkelson, who singles this one down the left field line. Baez headed to third. And now the Tigers have runners on the corners. And it seems like they are finally getting it together here on offense as well. That'll bring up Akil. Yabba dabba do. This one goes into the gap in left center. Baez scores. It's now 3-1. to one. An RBI double for Akil Badu. And now the Tigers have runners in scoring position with only one away. 
From there, the Guardians make a pitching change. They're going to go with James Karinchak, and I feel like this might be a little bit early to put Karinchak in the game, but he's really good at getting out of jams, and this is certainly a jam. Two runners on base, one away for Jonathan Scope. This one is hit nicely into deep right center field. It's a ground rule double. Both runners score, and we are tied at three. So to answer the question, no, he would not get out of the jam, and he would actually allow another run. It's a single here from Jamer Candelario. Scope will score, and the Detroit Tigers are now winning 4-3. to three. So no offense through the first four and a half innings. Then the Guardians score three. The Tigers respond with four. We move to the bottom of the six. It doesn't look like Cleveland is done. Luke Maley doubles down the line to left field. Maley's second hit of the night. And with two away, the Guardians have a runner in scoring position. That'll bring up Andres Jimenez. Drove in a run earlier. Looks like he might try to drive in another as it's a single in the right. Maley headed home. The throw is not in time. That was a very close play, but the Guardians get him to score. Another RBI for Andres Jimenez. His second at the game, and we are now tied at four. That'll bring up Ahmed Rosario. Hits this one into center, and it is caught! What a catch by Derek Hill! to get out of the inning. Cleveland scores one, but only one, thanks to the acrobatic defense of Hill. We move to the seventh now. It's Aniel De Los Santos in for his season debut at a 6.37 ERA in over 30 games last year with the Phillies and Pirates, respectively, as Javier Baez strikes out on the slider. A very easy 1-2 training there for De Los Santos, and the game remains tied at four. We move to the bottom of the seventh. It's Jose Ramirez who leads it off. Ramirez singled earlier in the game, and this one will again drop for a base hit. Ramirez is second, continuing his MVP-esque season, and now the Guardians start beating with a runner aboard. That'll bring up Bobby Bradley now, who hits this one high and deep in a right field. Go, ball, go. That one's out of here. A two-run homer for Bobby Bradley, and the Cleveland Guardians take the lead. Bradley's had a very weird season. He's hit for great power, already at 10 home runs. He's also barely hitting above the Mendoza line, pretty much what he was doing last year, hitting bombs and striking out. So from there, the Tigers make a pitching change. Manning is out. Jose Cisnero is in for his 11th appearance of the year with an ERA hovering at around four. With two away and a runner on first, it's Stephen Kwan who strikes out for a second time today. Rough debut here for Quan. He hasn't really gotten anything going, but still a good inning as the Guardians score two and are now winning. Nick Sandlin is in here in the top of the eighth for Cleveland. He's having a fantastic season with an ERA at 2.38 and has been one of this team's best pitchers overall. Spencer Torkelson leads off the inning, one for three today. Swing and miss on the fastball. Torkelson's had a rough rookie year himself, barely hitting above 200, certainly not living up to expectations thus far. With one away, it's Akil Badu who singles it into center, his second hit of the game. So now the Tigers have a speedster on base and a great opportunity to do some damage. With two away, it's Candelario who strikes out on the low slider. Good pitch for Sandlin to get out of the jam. Cleveland remains up by two as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Jose Cisnero doing a good job keeping the lead at two as Ahmed Rosario grounds it to third. Candelario backhanded throw. What a play by Jamer Candelario to get out of the inning. Score remains 6 4 as we go to the ninth. The superstar closer, Emmanuel Classe, is in for what would be his 12th save of the season. He starts with Robbie Grossman, gets him down on the quick slider. Good start there for Classe, who is definitely on pace to make his first All Star team this year. Now he gets Barnhart on the 101 mile an hour fastball. So he's used the slider, he's used the fastball. Fitting that he finishes it off on the cutter. What a play by Jose Ramirez there at third. And there's your ball game. The Guardians win a weird one. Six to four here is your final. Both offenses really struggled through the first half of this game. And then it was like a flip sort of switched. The Tigers scored four in the sixth inning, but really didn't get anything going other than that. As for us, we were a little bit better down the stretch, which is why we won. We had the big fifth inning, and then, of course, the two-run homer in the seventh by Bradley to win it. I think Cal Quantrill pitched quite well, minus that sixth inning, and then the bullpen did a good job of slamming the door. We're going to simulate now to this Astro series, in particular the second game. The only starter I haven't used yet is Zach Plesak, so I want to get to pitch with him as Mercado injures his shoulder. He'll be out one to two weeks. Replacing him on the big league roster will be Tyler Freeman, one of the best prospects 
prospects in our organization. He's having a great year in AAA. I figured, why not call him up, give him a shot, see what he can do. So in the three games we simmed, we went 0-3, including a 12-3 loss against Detroit, a 10-2 loss against the Astros. It really seems like we're playing some bad baseball now. We've lost three in a row, and we've really got to get things going here in this Houston series against one of the best teams in baseball in the Houston Astros, who are having another pretty good season as they currently sit at 27 and 22. Got to watch out for the trash cans. Bang, bang. Am I right? Let's take a look at both lineups. Notably, Tyler Freeman hitting in the five hole, making his major league debut today. We didn't get to see Stephen Kwan do anything in his debut, so hopefully Tyler Freeman has better luck. Jose Urquidy is starting for the Astros. He's had an okay season so far, 4.14 ERA, but he does have a pretty low whip at 1.18. Here is Jose Ramirez up to bat, still having a fantastic season as he gets plunked. So Ramirez will go to first, and now Cleveland has a base runner as that will bring up the Franimal, Fran Mill Reyes. Full count pitch, he draws the walk on the fastball, so the Guardians get two early runners aboard with two outs for Tyler Freeman in his first major league at bat. Hits it nicely and a right, but it will be caught by Kyle Tucker. So the Guardians get two aboard, but are unable to score them as we move to the bottom of the first. Zach Plesak on the bump for Cleveland. He's been pretty good this year, minus the fact that he has 18 strikeouts in like 50 innings. That's pretty bad. Here is Michael Brantley leading the game off of a single into center field. So the Astros have an early runner aboard. We'll see if they can do any damage with that. Of course, we know the middle of this Astros lineup is very dangerous. And when the early guys are getting things going, like Brantley and now Yulieski Gurriel, that could prove to be trouble. With that single for Gurriel, the Astros have two aboard here and nobody out. A great opportunity to do some early damage. One away for Tucker. Grounds it to first. What a play by Bobby Bradley to get the out. Both runners advance. Now there's two in scoring position. But they're going to need a base hit from Alex Bregman to drive them in. Bregman hits this one high. Deep in a right field. Nailer at the wall. It's gone. A three-run homer for Alex Bregman. And the Astros are on the board in the first inning. Well, I said they needed to get a base hit. And I think it's fair to say they got a base hit. So now it is 3-0 as that'll bring out the veteran infielder Aledmus Diaz of a rocket in the left field. And that one is out of here. And so the Astros now lead 4-0. Pretty bad start here for Zach Plesak, allowing back-to-back -back home runs. And now the Guardians are already down big. We move here to the second inning. Josh Naylor leads things off, gets that one over the glove of Aledmus Diaz, playing second today for Jose Altuve, who got the day off, as it's a single for Naylor. And the Guardians open up the inning with a base runner. 2-1 on now, one away for La Vestita, who grounds it to third. The Astros looking to turn two, and they do. It's a 5-4-3 double play. The Guardians are getting base runners on. They're just not doing anything with them. And with how good this Astros lineup is, the Guardians are going to need to do something with those runners. Hopefully, Zach Plesak can get his act together as he starts off with a strikeout on Jason Castro. Two away now for Michael Brantley. Got a base hit earlier in the game. And he's going to add another one as he singles into center for a second time today. We'll see if the Astros can do any damage here in this little two-out rally. So now Houston has a man aboard for Gurriel. He draws a walk on the low and inside slider. So now Houston has two on for Jordan Alvarez, who's been fantastic at the plate this season. Alvarez hits it high, deep into center. There's Miles Straw at the track of the wall. It's gone. A three-run homer for your Don Alvarez. And the Astros now lead this game 7-0. Houston has gone deep three times in the first two innings. They've gotten all of their runs with two outs for what it's worth. As Tucker flies it into center, the former Astro, Miles Straw, will catch it. Not a good start here through two innings. And Zach Plesak will not be returning for the third inning. So his day is done after just two innings, allowing seven runs off of three deniers. And now the Guardians have a lot of damage control to do as Jimenez goes down on the circle change. Jose Urquidy is pitching pretty well up to this point. He is allowing quite a few base runners, but he's making sure those guys don't score as he now gets Ramirez as well on the circle change. And the Guardians remain scoreless through three. And Yel De Los Santos is in for Cleveland in the bottom of the third. He's having a fantastic season since being called up. Even when Aaron Zavale comes back, if De Los Santos keeps at this pace... I don't think De Los Santos is going to go back down to AAA. He strikes out Chaz McCormick for an easy 1-2-3 inning. 
and the game remains 7-0. We're going to jump into the fifth. Same score as Brian Lavastida strikes out on the outside curveball. So the Guardians were getting some base runners early, but the past three innings, the offense has just looked completely lost. Jose Urquidy is dominating right now. And Yale De Los Santos has also pretty much dominated since he entered the game, but he does allow a two-out single there to Alex Bregman. So the Astros get a runner aboard. They've scored all seven of their runs with two outs today. Looking to add some more as Aledmus Diaz now singles it into right. And now Houston is starting to get something going again. Since De Los Santos entered the game, the Astros offense has been pretty much ice cold until now. That'll bring up Chaz McCormick with a rocket in the left field. That one will bounce off the wall. One run scores. It's a single for McCormick with his speed. Usually that's not a single. But nonetheless, Houston scores. They now lead 8-0. That'll bring up Jason Castro. He singles it into left field. Rosario going to try to throw home. He pump faked for a second. He hesitated. And the runner is safe. So the Astros now lead this game 9-0. De Los Santos would be taken out of the game for Anthony Ghost, who immediately allows a single there to Nico Goodrum. Another run scores until the Astros lead 10-0. All 10 of these runs have come with two outs, which is just pretty remarkable. That'll bring up Michael Brantley. He's 3-for-3 three three today. Lines it to short, caught by Freeman. But yeah, this has quickly turned into another disastrous game for the Guardians who have allowed double-digit runs in three straight games. Cleveland's pitching has been very bad as of recent, and in the bottom of the sixth, it wouldn't get a whole lot better. Two-run homer into right field for Kyle Tucker, and so the Astros now lead 12-0 as the entourage of offense continues. Two away now for Aledmiz Diaz. He crushes this one in the left, and it goes off the foul pole. Another home run for Houston. Another run with two outs. And Houston is now on top 13 to nothing. We move to the eighth now. Here is Bobby Bradley who lines it into left field. Finally, some offense from the Guardians as it's a double for Bradley. That's Cleveland's first base hit since the second inning. But hey, now there's a runner in scoring position. That'll bring up Stephen Kwan. He's had one at bat today. This is his second, and that will possibly be a base hit. It is his first hit of his career, but there's one problem. Bradley heads home, and he is out. I think Bradley was expecting that one to get by the glove of Aledmus Diaz, so he kept running, and that obviously backfired. Quite the first career major league hit, I've got to say, for Stephen Kwan. Hector Naris is in here in the ninth inning looking to finish off the job. Runner on here for Tyler Freeman with two away. He draws a walk. So that's Freeman's first time on base in his major league career. Two away now for Josh Naylor. Trying to avoid the shutout as he flies this one high and pretty deep in the left center. But it will be caught by Jordan Alvarez. And this game is over. Thank God. 13 to nothing. A blowout victory here for the Astros. Yeah, this was a bad game all around. There's no sugarcoating it. We played awful. The offense was terrible. The pitching was terrible. The defense was terrible. Even the base running was terrible. Nothing in this game went our way at all. And it seems like we are really losing a grip on this season. We've lost four straight in our last three games. We've been outscored 35-3. to three. So we're going to simulate now to the end of the month. You're approaching the start of June. We do get some good news on the injury front. It seems like a lot of our guys are starting to become healthy again, such as Austin Hedges, who is back. So we're going to send Brian Lavastida down to AAA. And now Lavastida is being offered here in a trade with the Giants for Dominic Leone. I ended up saying no. Aaron Savale and Oscar Mercado would both come back as well. So instead of sending down Daniel De Los Santos, we're going to send down Eli Morgan. I think De Los Santos has just been better. And then Tyler Freeman hasn't gotten a whole lot going here in Cleveland. So he's going to return to AAA for a little bit. But I think he'll be back in the majors in due time. So we would end up going 3-5 and five in the eight games I just simulated. Certainly not great. And overall, a pretty disappointing month of May. We started the month a game over 500. Now we're five games under 500. So we certainly have to get it together here in June. Or else we could be big-time sellers come the trade deadline. But before we conclude the video here, I do want to talk about the MLB Draft, which will be in the next episode. Just give you guys a little insight on what my strategy is going to look like, because we're in a very interesting spot. There are 15 blue chip players in this draft class. Those are the guys with the blue circles next to their name. These players all have a guaranteed A potential. Interestingly, we have the 15th overall pick. 
So that means only one blue chip player will be on the board for us. Now, I don't want to pick a reliever or somebody who is an MLB ETA of 2026 or later. So we got to figure out which blue chip players we would be happy with at 15. And if none of the guys that we want are on the board, do we pick the guaranteed A potential, even if they're not going to be good for a while or are a reliever? Or do we go for a different player at a more important position who won't have A potential most likely? So let's take a look at the guys I would be happy with. Here is Alex Cisneros, an 18-year-old starting pitcher from Puerto Rico. He looks really, really good. He has four pitches. He's a little bit more raw than I would like, but I would be very happy with him with the 15th pick. I think the sky is the limit for Alex Cisneros, and I think he has a shot to be a really, really good player. 20-year-old outfielder Ken Hawkins would be a player I'd be pretty happy with as well. He has good power, decent enough contact. His skill set is a little bit similar to, there I say, Louis St. John coming out of high school. He's not going to be as good as Louis St. John. For those who didn't watch the Orioles series, Louis St. John was our very first draft pick in the series, and he ended up, uh, well, he was pretty good. He had 5,000 major league hits and over 1,000 major league home runs. So, yeah, not too bad. Starting pitcher Omar Acevedo from Cuba looks pretty solid. He only has three pitches, unfortunately, but other than that, he does look pretty good, and he has a sick beard as well, so that's going to go for bonus points, right? Overall, another player I'd be pretty happy with at pick 15. There's 21-year-old outfielder Mario Marquez. He's a lefty. I love my lefties. I wish he was a little bit younger than 21, so maybe that limits his ceiling a little bit, especially considering he probably won't be major league ready for a couple years. But he does look like a pretty solid player in his own right. Shortstop Emmanuel Roca looks not too bad. I think he's one of the more MLB-ready blue-chip players in the draft class. He's a great contact hitter, good plate skills all around, pretty solid. And he's a switch hitter, which looks pretty nice. He can play shortstop, second, and third, so he has versatility as well. Richie De Los Santos has an MLB ETA of 2025, but keep in mind he's a reliever. I don't want to pick a reliever in the first round. Here is Zane Rowley, an 18-year-old switch hitting outfielder from the Netherlands. Good contact, good defense. He looks like a pretty good player. And then at third baseman, Jose Rosas. Again, a little bit on the older side at 22 years old, but I do think he is a pretty good bat. Just has to improve on his plate skills. Also a very good defensive player. So those are the blue chip players I would be happy with at pick 15. And we got to figure out if all of those guys are gone and the blue chip for us on the board is a reliever or has an MLB ETA of later than 2026, is it worth it to draft them or do we go with a different player who we might have scouted pretty high and is going to be ready earlier and is at a position of more prominence? And I will say this, if we don't get one of the blue chip guys that we want, there are players I would be comfortable with scattered throughout this draft class that I'd be okay with using the 15th overall pick on over one of the guaranteed blue chip players. So even if they don't have eight potential, I think they have a better chance of contributing early and often for our major league team within the next two to three years. So having this 15th overall pick really puts us in an interesting position. And I'm very excited to see how the draft board plays out and what this draft is going to look like for us. As you all know, I always like to make my draft videos very well done, whether it's for MLB The Show or Madden or NBA 2K. This year is going to be no different. I'm going to be working very hard on this draft episode. I'm excited for you guys to see it all, which will be in the next episode. I'm going to live premiere it Monday. For those who don't know what that means, it's going to be like a normal video, but if you come to the premiere, there's going to be a live chat. We'll, you'll be able to get some insight from me as well as get to communicate with other viewers. So it's pretty fun. And if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to come through and check it out. I'll put a time for the live premiere on the community tab probably tomorrow, just so you guys can get an idea of when that would be. So yeah, that'll conclude today's episode. I hope everybody enjoyed. Make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.